I have a short little episode for you today. It's the earrings to match the donut wheel pendant. And these, they're so quick and they're so easy to make. And they're, they're so simple to make. All you need is some 26 gauge wire and the little donuts and the little beads. And they're real quick and they're just, they're so pretty and petite. They're pretty much made the same way as the big one, except for uh, wiring in the jump ring at the top to attach to the ear wire. And I have a couple short little stories about uh, nuclear well, accidents. I wouldn't call them accidents as much as on purposes or just neglect. But I have two little short stories, since this is a very short episode. The first one is called Krama, Kramatorsk Radiological Accident, and it takes place in the Ukraine. So, let's get started. The Kramatorsk Radiological Accident was a radiation accident that happened in Kramatorsk, Ukrainian SSR from 1980 to 1989. A small capsule containing highly radioactive cesium-137 was found inside the concrete wall of an apartment building with a surface gamma radiation exposure dose rate of 1800 rand per year. The capsule was detected only after residents requested that the level of radiation in the apartment be measured by a health physicist. The capsule was originally part of a radiation level gauge and was lost in the Kerensky Quarry in the late 1970s. The search of the capsule was unsuccessful and ended after a week. The gravel from the quarry was used in construction. The cesium castle ended up in the concrete panel of apartment 85 of building 7 on the Maria Primachenk Street, at the time under the Soviet name of, I'm not pronouncing that, between apartments 85 and 52. Over nine years, two families lived in apartment 85. A child's bed was located directly next to the wall containing the capsule. The apartment was fully settled in 1980. A year later, an 18-year-old woman who lived there suddenly died. In 1982, her 16-year-old brother followed and then their mother. Even after that, the flat didn't attract much public attention despite the fact that the residents all died from leukemia. Doctors were unable to determine the root cause of illness and explain the diagnosis by poor heredity. Poor heredity. A new family moved into the apartment and their son died from leukemia as well. His father managed to start a detailed investigation during which the vial was found in the wall in 1989. By the time the capsule was discovered, four residents of the building had died from it, and 17 more had received varying doses of radiation. Part of the wall was removed and sent to the Institute for Nuclear Research, where the cesium capsule was removed and identified by serial number and disposed of. That's insane! And that's the end of that short story. Next is the story of David Hahn. Now, he's had uh, TV shows and books written about him, so you may have heard of him by, by now. Uh, he's known as the Radioactive Boy, or the Nuclear Boy Scout. Okay, so here we go. David Charles Hahn. Born October 30th, 1976, died September 27, 2016, sometimes called the Radioactive Boy Scout, or the Nuclear Boy Scout. Was an American nuclear radiation enthusiast nuclear radiation enthusiast who built a homemade neutron source at the age of 17. A scout in the Boy Scouts of America, Han conducted his experiments in secret in the backyard shed at his mother's house in Commerce Township, Michigan. Han's goal was to build and demonstrate a homemade breeder reactor. While he never managed to build a reactor, in August 1994, Han's progress attracted the attention of local police when they found material in his vehicle that troubled them during a stop for a separate matter. When Han warned them <coughs> excuse me, when Han warned them the material was radioactive, the police contacted federal authorities. His mother's property was cleaned up by the Environmental Protection Agency ten months later as a super fun cleanup site. Han attained Eagle Scout rank shortly after his lab was dismantled. While the incident was not widely publicized publicized initially, it became better known 
following a 1998 Harper's Magazine article by journalist Ken Silverstein. Han was also the subject of Silverstein's 2004 book, The Radioactive Boy Scout. As an adult, Han served in the United States Navy and the United States Marine Corps. He was subsequent, subsequently treated for mental illness, and his death at age 39 was related to drug and alcohol. Hmm, background. Han was born in Royal Oak, Michigan. Creation of the neutron source. Han was a Boy Scout fascinated by chemistry and spent years conducting amateur chemistry experiments, which sometimes caused small explosions and other mishaps. He was inspired in part by reading the Golden Book of Chemistry Experiments and tried to collect samples of every element on the periodic table, including the radioactive ones. He later received a merit badge in atomic energy and became fascinated with the idea of creating a breeder reactor in his home. How would you even use that in your home? Han diligently amassed radioactive material by collecting small amounts from household products such as americium from smoke detectors, thorium from camping lantern mantles, radium from clocks, and tri tritium from gun sites. His reactor was a bored out block of lead, and he used lithium from a thousand dollars worth of purchased batteries to purify the thorium ash, burning a Bunsen burner. Han ultimately hoped to create a breeder reactor using low-level isotopes to transform samples of thorium and uranium into fissionable isotopes. His homemade neutron source was often incorrectly referred to as a reactor but it did emit measurable levels of radiation, likely exceeding a thousand times normal background radiation. Alarmed, Han began to dis dismantle his experiment, but in a chance encounter with the police discovered his activities which triggered a federal radiological emergency response team involving the FBI and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. On June 26, 1995, the EPA, having designated Han's mother's property a super fun hazardous materials cleanup site, dismantled the shed and its contents and buried them as low-level radioactive waste in Utah. Unknown to officials, his mother, fearful that she would lose her house if the full extent of the radiation were known, had already collected the majority of the radioactive materials and thrown it away in the conventional garbage. Han refused medical evaluation for radiation exposure. EPA scientists believe that Han's life expectancy may have been shortened due to his exposure to radioactivity, particularly since he spent long periods in these small enclosed sheds with large amounts of radioactive materials and only minimal safety precautions, but he refused the recommendations that he be examined at the Enrico Fermi Nuclear Generation Station. His career Han became depressed after the scandal, a problem exacerbated by the breakup with his then-girlfriend and the suicide of his mother in early 1996. While he did graduate from high school, he lacked any directions or plans thereafter. His father and stepmother first encouraged him to attend Macomb Community College. He enrolled in the metallurgy program there, but frequently skipped classes. He was then encouraged to join the military, so he enlisted in the Navy, assigned to the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier USS Enterprise as an undesignated seaman. After a four-year tour, he achieved interior communications specialist with the rank of petty officer third class. After his time on the USS Enterprise, Han enlisted in the Marine Corps and was stationed in North Carolina. After a few years, Han achieved the rank of Lance Corporal. Shortly after returning from a rotation in Japan, he was honorably discharged on medical grounds and returned to Michigan. FBI Investigation On April 23, 2007, the FBI received a lead regarding Han's alleged possession of a second neutron source in his freezer. Contacted via telephone, Han insisted that he was not in possession of radioactive material. The FBI decided no imminent terrorist threat was present, but decided to attempt a personal interview. During an interview at the FBI office on May 16, 2007, investigators' questions touched on a variety of topics, such as flyers that Han had distributed promoting his book and upcoming film, theft of tires and rims from a vehicle prior to his Navy service, a diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia, and a few less significant topics. FBI agents then interviewed an individual whose identity was not released, who stated that Han was using cocaine heavily 
was not taking his prescribed medication, was paranoid about people who he claimed had the ability to shock his genitals with their minds, and had possibly been visited by prostitutes. The individual also stated that he had believed that Han was still trying to build a reactor and was collecting radium. He stated that he did not believe Han had any intentions of hurting anyone, but was concerned about his mental state. The investigation is likely what led to Han's arrest regarding larceny of smoke alarms. Larceny of smoke alarms. On August 1, 2007, Han was charged with larceny in Clinton Township, Michigan for allegedly removing a number of smoke detectors from the halls of his apartment building. His intention was to obtain a merisium, a merisium, a merisium from them. In his mugshot, his face is covered with sores, which investigators believe could have been from exposure to radioactive materials, psoriasis, or possible drug use. During a circuit court hearing, Han pleaded guilty to the attempted larceny of a building. The court's online docket said prosecutors recommended that he be sentenced to time served and enter an inpatient treatment facility. Under terms of the plea, the original charge of larceny of a building would be dismissed at sentencing, scheduled for October 4th. He was sentenced 90 days in jail for attempted larceny. Court records state that his sentence would be delayed by six months while Han underwent medical treatment in the psychiatric unit of Macomb County Jail. His death. On September 27, 2016, at the age of 39, Han died in his hometown of Shelby Charter Township, Michigan. His death was ruled an accidental result of intoxication from the combined effects of alcohol, uh, diphenhydramine, 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 that's it, and fentanyl. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching me make a thing and listening to me babble on about interesting things. And I will talk to you next time. Thank you so much. Like and subscribe. See you later.